coming up in today's episode. Our surroundings and where we are greatly affect everything from our mood to our creativity, to the way we think or talk even. You know, when I'm in Texas, my Southern accent starts to kind of sneak back in, but in Los Angeles, I never have it. It's very strange. I know how passionate and how protective uh, people can get on where they live. They are very proud some people are, especially especially you fellow Texans, you are very proud to be Texans and my father is one of them. I know that, um, you know, people from LA get a bad rap. I don't know how that happened until <laughs> I meet the stereotype and it all just all makes sense. This podcast episode is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform where you can design a custom website that fits the needs for your business. So if you've been wanting to start a blog or have your own website to sell products or to showcase your work in any way, Squarespace is 100% what I would recommend because I've personally been using Squarespace for years and I love it. If you sell products, you can build a beautiful online store with Squarespace and easily sell in person too by connecting a square reader to the Squarespace app. And a big portion of my website, extamckenna.com, is a blog where I share photos of my projects and DIY tutorials. So if you're also wanting to share your projects, Squarespace has really easy to use blogging tools to share photos, videos, and recommendations. And if you're unsure on how to design a website, Squarespace's platform is so easy to use, there is no experience needed. And they even have flexible website templates that you can get started with, and then you can customize the look, update the content, and add features features that are specific to your business. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial and start building your website. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hello guys, welcome back. I am currently living on a high of just finishing our outdoor makeover. So when I'm filming this, we just finished it this weekend. So I've been just enjoying staring at it. This was like around our pool area. So if you haven't seen that video over on my YouTube channel, I will definitely leave it linked. <laughs> Cause I knew the outdoor area needed work and we moved in in January. So we've had about six months to just live with it as is and it just kept all the brick and all the hardscape and that that was just all it was kind of just kept staring at me and just it felt very blah and all the same and I just knew I wanted to break up that hardscape and we embarked on a makeover yes in the middle of the heat <laughs> in California Every day of, it took us about a week and a half to complete because we weren't starting until about three in the afternoon because we waited for it to be shaded because every day of the week that we were working on it, it was high 90s over 100 degrees every day. So, you know, being out there trying to do the makeover was, was too much during the middle of the day. So it took us a little longer to complete, but we made one major change and several smaller changes that really affect the feeling of our backyard and our, our pool poolside patio area. Uh, the major change was that we added turf because we had all hardscape. So we invested in really quality turf to put down around the pool in certain spots. Uh, and it just, oh, if you haven't seen it, you've got to see it. If you haven't seen it, like, just trust me. It feels like I wish you could experience it the same way I do, but I, it definitely feels like you're on vacation somewhere because it's just every corner is thought about. I th really thought about the elements, you know, like we wanted to add the grass and um, we had the water element because of the pool, but I would love to add a fountain one day. I feel like that would be amazing, like that you could hear the water. That's so calming, you know what I mean? Like just to have that kind of like vibe back there. We also thought about like a fire element. So I knew I wanted to add a fire pit. We added lighting, solar lighting out there, which is like my favorite solar light I've ever found. So I'm so, I'm so, so, so happy with the way that it all came together. 
uh, cause I didn't know in the beginning cause every project I take on is usually, if it's not a hundred percent new to me, it's at least 60 to 70% new. Cause I'm always trying to like push myself to try new things and to, uh, learn new things and experiment with new materials or ways to do things. So every time I'm entering something a little bit feeling like I'm procrastinating cause I've never done it before. And also, Ooh, I don't know how this is going to go. If it's bad, it's going to be okay. We're just going to pivot and change and, and whatever. So we have some more elements that I'd love to add in the future, but this is definitely a step in the right direction because when I'm recording, this is the beginning of August. By the time you hear this, we are quickly approaching fall and I am so excited. I mean, by the time we get to the last week in August, I'm, my brain is already full fall mode and we are gearing up like for decorating and just cozy vibes. So we wanted to soak up the last of summer and the really warm uh, months here um, around the pool. And so we we tackled the makeover before the season, the summer season was over. So I'm still living on a little bit of a high from it. I'm, I'm very, very um, happy with it. We're gonna be doing some more projects inside uh, here in California, cause we are, I am gonna be spending more time in California um, through the remainder of the year. Uh, cause we've got a lot of projects that I'm, I'm working on for work and exciting, really exciting things coming up that are just kind of forcing me to kind of be back home. It, summer was a blast, um, but I will I will be back in Texas just to visit my mom and um, to do some things at the cottage, just small things. So stay tuned on that front. But um, I asked you guys last week what you wanted to hear on the podcast. And I'm always kind of like taking notes of the comments that you guys leave on what you want to talk about, whether it's home decor based or just a life at home or just life or whatever it is, I'm always kind of jotting down notes that um, really resonate with me on topics that we could discuss. And one really popped out to me uh, recently and it got me thinking kind of in a broader sense about this, but uh, the comment said, I would love to hear you talk more about the culture in Los Angeles. I feel like there's always a shift in your videos from Texas to LA, which I didn't I didn't know, I'm just me, you know? So I, I, I didn't know that, uh, but I have had, other people say that, that it's, it's kind of like different. Obviously it's completely different vibe here versus, versus Texas. Uh, I, and I would be curious what your thoughts were on the stereotypes surrounding LA and the people who moved there. What are your experiences with it? Was it a huge culture shift when you first moved there or did you feel like you fit right in? I'd love to hear a more detailed account of when you first moved to LA or what inspired you as a child to move there. Well, so that's specific on like location, you know, LA versus Texas, because that's really what, you know, I can really speak to. Um, but I started thinking of it more in terms of like, man, if my content or like my videos shift when I'm in Texas versus California, it just really plays into the fact that our surroundings and where we are greatly affect everything from our mood to our creativity, to the way we think or talk even. You know, when I'm in Texas, my Southern accent starts to kind of sneak back in, but in Los Angeles, I never have it. It's very strange. It's a very strange thing. So I feel like subconsciously she's right. I do have, there is this shift, I think in me personally, uh, in the mindset and the vibe and everything. And then I think that that translates through to my videos because I show the real me, you know? So it's it's this kind of like difference between the two. So I'll first just touch on, you know, Texas versus LA and like um, living in both places and, and what made me come out here. And then we'll kind of get into like surroundings as a whole. Cause I feel like not only can a city affect your mood and way of living and, and your creativity and everything that comes with that, uh, like being in the city versus being in the countryside could. Those are very different lifestyles that you live, you know, and also inside your home, like your bedroom, where you work can greatly affect your mood and your creativity and all of that stuff. So let's first talk, talk about 
LA versus versus Texas. So I am not originally from Texas, actually. I don't know if most of you guys know this, that I was born in Louisiana. That's why my necklace that's actually, I need to get repaired. Um, the chain just kind of like snapped, but so I put it away, but I, I wear a Fleur de Lis necklace um, because Fleur de Lis is the state symbol of Louisiana. Uh, my grandparents gave it to me when I graduated from college and it was melted gold from um, all of my grandmothers and grandfathers. Um, jewelry so it's really really special to me but when the chain broke I, I, I put it away so that I could have it fixed uh, so that's why I wear a fleur-de-lis I'm originally from Louisiana I lived there from the time I was born uh, to about nine years old and then we moved to Houston Texas so I grew up and what the most the majority of the years that I remember uh or from Texas, because those were kind of pivotal years, like, you know, like middle school and high school kind of thing. Then when I got, uh, I applied to FIDM, FIDM in LA to go to fashion school, I moved to California when I was 19 and I've lived here ever since. But during the pandemic, we did buy a home in Texas because, well, the pandemic happened and I needed something positive to put my energy into and I think we all were searching for just like how to stay sane during that um and I needed content for my business my I, I didn't know what to film you know so it's it's that you I had grown this business and now I had I don't know what to do anymore so we invested in a property in Texas and so through the pandemic I wasn't really traveling I was spending time with my parents which is not in Houston which is about four hours outside of where I grew up uh, so it's where my parents currently live and where they moved to once I went away to college. So I was there and have been there for about two and a half years. And then it's just been recently in the last two months that I've actually been spending more time back in California where I call home. Uh, because of all of the places that I've lived, I've lived now in California the longest. So in Louisiana, it was nine years. In uh, Texas, I guess it was from when I was nine to 19, so that's 10 years. And now in California for 16 years. So when I look at a place, you know, just look location wise, where I call home and home will always be where the people I love are, right? My mom, wherever she is, she could move to Nova Scotia and I would call that home. If that makes sense, like 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 she's like base for me, but also I've been in a relationship with Romeo for almost all of those 16 years and we're looking, we're, we wanna build a family and start a family. Um, we own a home together, like all of those things um, too. So he's also home. And I just happen to really love California for some obvious reasons. The weather, like my finger is on the pulse of, of everything kind of thing. I always feel like I'm, you know, in the know of things that are happening. Like, I don't know, we'll get into it. So of all of the places I've lived in California the longest, and there are major drastic differences between all of those places. And I feel like anywhere you live is always gonna have their own cultures, their own um, vibe about them, their own um, way that you have your routines and your lifestyle there. And what really drew me to LA, and I'm not kidding you, when I knew I wanted to move to California and LA specifically or the surrounding, LA is huge, by the way. So when people say LA, they don't always mean Hollywood. That I think is a common misconception if you have never really lived here. Visiting here and living here are very different things. So we'll get into that. I always knew, and I think at the time, I thought of LA as Hollywood for sure. Cause I was like eight years old and I had just figured out what California was and I wanted to be an actress. I could never be an actress though. I, I even took acting classes. It was horrible. I was not good at it. I can't not be me. So that was an issue. I couldn't be a character, you know? I knew at eight that I wanted to come to California. I wanted to move here. So when I was, you know, my mom kind of appeased me. She kind of was like, oh, okay. Cause she knew it was so far in the future that that would actually be a reality if she needed to deal with that then. Uh, but she, <laughs> she was like, let's go on vacation. Let's go there. Let's, you know, like take some tours. Let's go around, you know, like, let's see where you want to go to college. I wanted to, I wanted to go to UCLA and I wanted to be an actress. And we came, we were on tours. We would, you know, we went like tours of the stars homes, you know, all of the very touristy 
Hollywood things that you do when you come to to LA specifically. And we were on a tour and I remember, and she remembers this too because she's mentioned it to me a couple of times. We were in the middle of like touring literally the walk of, of um, the stars, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And we were walking down and I was like, I don't know why we're on this tour. We should just go and look at my apartment that I'm gonna live in when I moved here. I was like, I think at that time I was like 11. <laughs> ridiculous I'm just ridiculous uh, we also went to New York because I, I did want to go to fashion school at one point so we went to New York and I because I was considering going to Parsons in New York I am not a New York girly uh, I've been to New York a lot for work I used to travel there several times a year I'm unfortunately not I don't thrive in in New York uh, I remember walking down the streets and just like this is a very like insignificant. I think I think also work put tainted New York for me. I want to go back to New York when it's not a work trip, and we may do that, Romeo um, and I, and just experience New York in a different way because I, I can tell you the food, everything about it, I love. You know that's l l so cool, and and I love the vibe. Um, but just living there, I saw myself, you know, living more in California. So growing up. I obviously lived in Houston, Texas, which is not a small city by any means. I mean, if you look it up, I think that it's one of, it's very, it's very big town. It has everything that you need. You know, like it's, it's very um, diverse. It's very like, it has an, an art scene and a creative scene. And I guess I talk about that specifically cause that's where I thrive. I don't thrive on like nightclubs and going out and bars and things. I like good food and I like art and I like, the creative kind of like realm, you know? So Houston's great. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's a huge town. Uh, so growing up there and then moving to Los Angeles was not a culture shock at all. It was both big cities, both very diverse, for, both felt like a melting pot, you know, of different cultures and people and ideas and all of that stuff. So it wasn't culture shock at all. I didn't feel that in the slightest. I think what I felt more is moving to a city and so far away from what I had previously known and not knowing anyone. I didn't have any family out here when I moved for college. I knew no one. So I had to kind of start from scratch, but I was going to college. That's a little bit easier than just being an adult and moving to a new city. Um, so it was, you know, I was going to college. I met friends through college. I obviously worked. Um, so I met Romeo at an Italian restaurant that I was working at. That's how we met. I met great friends there too. So wasn't culture shock moving here at all. And it wasn't until recently. Now, I'm going to tread lightly here because I know how passionate and how protective uh, people can get on where they live. They are very proud. Some people are, especially, <laughs> especially you fellow Texans, you are very proud to be Texans. And my father is one of them. He is a proud Texan. Um, very much so. So people can be very territorial about like standing up for their area. So I am going to tread lightly and I'm only speaking to my experiences. Uh, and I live there too. <laughs> I am from there. I grew up there. Uh, and it's sad to say that I have had to say that too often. And what I mean by that is over the last couple of years that I've been back in Texas, I have not been... Well, even though I'm from there and I have to use that as like kind of like my fail safe thing, like, oh no, I'm from here because if someone gets wind or a whiff a tex in Texas that I'm from California, I have never experienced that much distaste for people from California before. Now, there is a lot of reasons why they think that. At the time when I also bought the cottage, you know, there were a lot of people moving from California to Texas, a lot, specifically from LA to Austin. And it was, you go to Austin now, and if you've never been to LA, Austin is almost a mini carbon copy 
of LA now from what I've experienced. And I've been to Austin a handful of times, maybe like 10 or 12 times in the last three, two years, 10 or 12 times. Um, we were going pretty frequently too, because we kind of wanted a sense of home. That's crazy. We wanted a sense of LA. So we wanted to go to the places that like restaurants that had duplicates, you know, they had multiple locations. They had one in LA and one in Austin. I'm like, Oh my God, let's go. Like if you knew my obsession with Alfred coffee alone, you'll know why I drive all the way to Austin. It's that familiar home-like thing that we just craved. So Romeo and I would, would get in their car and drive the hour and a half, two hours-ish, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to Austin uh, to have that you know kind of sense of, of home. Uh, because where we have the cottage is very kind of like separated. It's not in a big city. It's what you call a small town. You have to drive a little further out to go to the grocery store, to go to anything. Like I obviously go to the hardware store a lot and I have to drive 30 minutes to the hardware store and the grocery store. We don't have access to those health, like good restaurants in the town. Uh, not to discredit that, yes, there's one. This podcast episode is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform where you can design a custom website that fits the needs for your business. So if you've been wanting to start a blog or have your own website to sell products or to showcase your work in any way, Squarespace is 100% what I would recommend because I've personally been using Squarespace for years and I love it. If you sell products, you can build a beautiful online store with Squarespace and easily sell in person too by connecting a square reader to the Squarespace app. And a big portion of my website, extamckenna.com, is a blog where I share photos of my projects and DIY tutorials. So if you're also wanting to share your projects, Squarespace has really easy to use blogging tools to share photos, videos, and recommendation. And if you're unsure on how to design a website, Squarespace's platform is so easy to use, there is no experience needed. And they even have flexible website templates that you can get started with, and then you can customize the look, update the content, and add features features that are specific to your business. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial and start building your website. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. There is one restaurant in town that is like good and it's closed on Mondays and Tuesdays or Sundays, Mondays and Tuesdays. The whole town shuts down for two days. That doesn't happen in LA, you know, but there's something very quaint about that. And when you're not living there, for me personally, I feel like the town that we bought the cottage in is very much a retirement uh, town. Uh, and that's not just to say that most of the population is older. They are. But in the same breath, it's also just the way of living is more suited to retirement, it's slower. You get to mosey on down the street. You can talk to your friends on the corner. Everybody knows everybody. It's very cute. It's, it's very quaint. But for a lifestyle like I live, it doesn't work. I am very much need the city. I need things happening. But I need an escape. I need exactly what the cottage is for me. I love going there to disconnect, to take a step back and work a little slower and go a little slower. Um, it's great for that. I, I thrive on that. So for that, it works really well. Now, Houston, totally different story. Big city. Texas is a huge place. So when we're talking about Texas, <laughs> like you could talk about all of these like large cities and then <laughs> the little town that, that our cottage is in um, and just doesn't fit for our lifestyle right now. So we knew going into buying the cottage that it wasn't going to be somewhere where we lived full time. It was going to be exactly what it was, a great work project for me to work on, to renovate all the skills that I've upped, you know, my skill level that I've upped, what the experiences that I've had through that um, renovation project. Also, I got to spend more time with my parents. And now we have a place when we start a family to go back to and to have a very comfortable stay. We can stay for longer periods of time when we have kids, you know, so that they have like a longer, you know, cause we live so far away, I wanted them to have a stronger relationship with my parents. Uh, so for all of those reasons, it's fantastic, but for where I see life and where I call home location wise, aside from the people, it is in California and in LA. So LA is a very big place. And I think 
she mentioned about stereotypes and how I know that, um, you know, people from LA get a bad rap. I don't know how that happened until (laughs) I meet the stereotype and it all just all makes sense. I, I have been, I don't know. I have met people here through work and living here for so many years that are LA natives. Romeo is from California originally. He was born in the Bay Area, but grew up in Orange County and Los Angeles. Like he's from here and he is not the stereotype. The stereotype I think that California gets, and oh, also a lot of our friends I have, we have friends and a lot of those friends I've met through Romeo because he grew up here. He had a lot of childhood friends. So from there, they got girlfriends and friends and people that they met and our friend group grew. And that's kind of the people that I call my friends. They're LA natives. They live more so South, like more towards Orange County, but not the Orange County, like don't think like Laguna Beach kind of vibe. Like it's more like suburban and and more um, just, everyday life, like regular people, not the stereotype. So I think the stereotype that people are referring to and that what I am calling the stereotype is the Hollywood plastic, oh, I I mean, what are the other stereotypes? I don't know, like it's very cringy. And so I did recently, which is why this, this comment stuck to me so much. And I was like, oh, we had to have to talk about that now. I've been to so many flea markets over my lifetime that I make a pathway. So when I walk in a flea market, I pick a direction and most flea markets are set up by aisles. I go up and then down and then up and then down and then up. Like I follow a path, right? I don't like to be sporadic because I don't want to miss anything. Uh, I like order. So I started on my path at this flea market and there were these two girls that were the stereotype, specifically one of them. I think the other one was just trying to be nice to her. You could tell that they didn't really know each other, but they were on my path. They were on my, so they were with me literally until I had to pivot and change paths just to like avoid it. So every couple of booths or so, I would get close enough to hear their conversation. Now, I don't talk to anyone when I flea market. Romeo and I split up. He goes and looks for vintage clothing. I go and look for home decor. We have our rhythm. We don't walk together most of the time. It's very rare for you to find us together. And I don't talk to anybody. I'm just soaking it up. I talk to the vendors. You know, like I'm just, I'm browsing. It's my quiet time. It's my it's my peaceful time. I love flea markets. So they are on my path. Every couple of booths, I hear them and their conversations. And the, I can, maybe you can, figure out the stereotype from just the conversations that I'll tell you that they had. One booth I got to, they were talking about plastic surgery. And she's like, oh, I've had so much plastic surgery that I tell all of my friends, you need to come to me first. I'm basically like a doctor. Like you need to come to me and tell me, like ask me anything because I've had it all done. And I'm like, okay. So that was one, that was, that was the brief kind of like moment that I heard in that conversation. Now, I guess we have to take this all with a grain of salt because I didn't hear their whole conversation. I just picked up on a few things that I feel like are the stereotypical kind of things that when they think of like California people, they think of this. So that was one conversation. A couple booths later, I come across them again and they are talking about just like very boastful and talking about like name dropping. Name dropping, I feel like is a big one. Like when you, like I just feel like anyone that name drops to add value to what they're talking about or to their life or to make a, you know, like a power play against someone that they're talking to, I I don't personally respond too well. I'm like, wow, it's just not very humbled. So she was Nate and it just sounded fake. She was just, and maybe she was someone huge. I don't know. But like the, her delivery of it all was, was very cringe. Uh, she was talking about like, I don't even remember who she name dropped. I, some of them I didn't even like really know, but I knew like it was all in the music industry. Um, so I like very like specific artists. And I think she was talking about more like EDM, like kind of like DJ kind of people. Uh, so she was talking about that. She was like, yeah, when I dropped my single, 
blah, 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 blah. This person and this person, this person's going to work on it. It was kind of like that conversation. And then a couple of booths later, it was, it was that type of stuff. It was, um, I guess what they would call the stereotype, um, of LA, the very plastic, you know, got a lot of plastic surgery done, caring about their appearance, um, you know, the Hollywood scene, wanting to be an actress or a struggling actor or actress, you know, working at a restaurant or something. That's very real here. Like, especially right now with the writer's strike and SAG and everything going on right now, like that's very real. The actors have to work. They have to make money. They have to live just like the rest of us, like very much. Um, so, I've never really uh, been affected and I've, I, I've never really experienced the distaste for California before this last couple of years in Texas because obviously I was living in Texas too. Cal the idea of California never came up. There were a couple of times when I was so aggravated that I just like wanted to run back to California and leave Texas behind because of the situations that I was in, like people just like giving their opinion about California. It was like, like really distasteful. Like that was just bad. One person told me when I had mentioned um, that, oh, we own a house here. I don't know how it came up, but I stopped telling people that I was even, I, I never said the word California again anywhere. I mentioned California and they were like, don't tell people that. People hate that. People hate you. I was like, okay, what? Anyways, that was one. There was another one <laughs> actually happened to Romeo at the airport because he had a hat that said to live and die in LA, which is a lyric from a song. And he had it on a hat. And the lady starts going off about it to him about like how dumb he is for liking California and how dumb he is for LA. Why would you even put it on a hat? It was just, it's absolutely wild. So we, there's been very weird situations like that. And, and I get a lot of people from California are moving to Texas, uh, specifically Austin. Um, they're hiking up the, you know, the real estate because coming from California and the, the difference in like income and stuff, I get all of that. And I'm very, I'm very much treading very lightly here. Um, this was just someone that had commented. This is just my experience and just like, you know, my outlook. And I think that people should live where they thrive. Like if you like Texas, fantastic. If you like wherever, if you like California, I don't know, under, quite understand why people have opinions about other people in other cities. That that doesn't really make sense to me because I know I don't. I don't have opinions about anyone. I don't stereotype people, but I do recognize that stereotypes exist. Um, but I have been fortunate enough to make friends that are really quality people um, that live here and all over, from all over. I mean, you guys watching are from all over and I've met so many of you guys here. You may be in California, you may be somewhere else and you're all absolutely amazing. So I'm so uh, proud of, of, of us as a community. Like we're just like really cool people. Um, so the stereotypes don't really uh, affect me that much. Um, but do I feel like I fit right in? Uh, yeah, I think in my own way, I feel like from outsiders looking in, LA is like small and LA is not small. LA it has pockets of so many different areas. It's so big from up in the valley to down close to Orange County, you know, and from side to side, from east to west, like it's huge. There's, it's a melting pot. And the reasons that I love it here so much, besides the obvious weather, it's been hot recently, but the obvious weather, it stays pretty much 72 and sunny in California, which is why everybody loves it. Despite, yes, the, like, my, what my brother would say is like, why do you want to live in a place that has a, a impending doom of this earthquake and earthquakes in general? Uh, and trust me, I have run from a fair share of hurricanes in the South in my life, Katrina and Rita included, and that wasn't fun either. So you've got natural disasters everywhere. You know what I mean? Also the fires here. You got natural disasters everywhere. 
Um, but did I feel like I could fit right in? Yeah, I feel like I made this my home in whatever way that meant to me. And that's gonna mean different things um, to different people. So I definitely understand the stereotype um, and I get it and it does exist. But I also don't go to the, like if you live in LA, you don't go to the touristy areas. You won't find an LA native or an, a person that's lived in LA for a long period of time at Hollywood and Highland. And Hollywood and Highland is the cross streets between literally Hollywood Boulevard and Highland Avenue. And right there is where the Walk of Fame is. And there's a big like shopping mall. That's where um, you know the Wax Museum is. And like that's, that's a very touristy hub. You're not going to find people that have lived here forever uh, there. You never, I mean, maybe, but odds are, no, I don't know anyone that goes and chooses to go through Hollywood and Highland. I won't even drive through it. Like that's how bad it is because of so many tourists and stuff. So you won't ever find um, people that live there, like kind of in those, those towns um, where maybe like more of the transplant LA people are the people that live here for a limited amount of time and then move away. You know, like they, they come and they try and make it out here and make it as an actress or a model or a, a musician or, or whatever it is. And then they don't make it and they go home, you know, kind of like the transplant turnover. That's that's very much real here. Um, so it's it's a little different, but it got me thinking like that. That is um, a lot about, you know, L.A. versus Texas and just how our surroundings, like the city that we live in, the area that we live in, whether it's a city or the countryside or the beach or the mountains or whatever it is, it's always going to affect our moods and our creativity. And I know that I'm affected by it a lot. Uh, when I'm in uh, Texas for an extended period of time, like I have been, uh, and I'm busy, but my mom's busy too, and I'm just like living there, you know, going to buy groceries, coming home, doing that stuff. I, I tend to start to go stir crazy because I'm like, it's almost like cabin fever. Like I feel like I've been cooped up and I can't just easily go out and do something. I do start to feel that because the town is just a little smaller. And that then conversely here, sometimes I feel like it's a little bit too much that I need to either shut the doors and just like be with myself here at home or take a trip, go to the cottage, have a little bit slower um, pace of life at the moment, spend some time with my family, spend some time with my mom. You know, sometimes we just need a change of scenery because um, wherever you are, it can greatly affect your mood and your creativity. So also your space because this is big for me i've always been a person to want to rearrange my space and this goes back to me working like a corporate job too like or even like as a kid i always wanted to like move things around um and make things look different i liked change in my space because it shook up the world i saw things differently when i was working my corporate job uh especially a, a couple of corporate jobs a couple of of fashion jobs, I was always ended up in a manager position of like a certain little group of people within the company or a big group of people. And so I always tend to be adding team members to my group. And we would always be, it was all fashion in the fashion world. They love open concept offices. They do not believe in closed doors which is both great and not great at the exact same time. There's just like no conferences. There's no meeting rooms. There's no private space. They love, at least, at least the ones that I worked on, they love open concept. Well, I it's just weird. It doesn't work. It doesn't look good. You can't decorate. It's just very odd. And it affected my like creativity a lot. Being like hearing everyone's conversations and like my workflow was negatively impacted by an open concept office. But I always found myself wanting to move around our desks to make it look better or have more flow. And I was constantly moving it around. Then when we got in, you know, we had our apartment, obviously, I would always want to like see if my bed or my couch looked better on another wall. And that shakeup and that change would affect my mood. It would affect, you know, how I looked and worked in the space. And so when 
I'm getting to like the ha- like the house that we're renovating and I'm always experiment like trying to change things up. I feel like this room will stay the same for quite a period of time and then sometimes I'll come over and maybe take some of the art that's behind me and maybe move it to another room and swap things out. And when I I find something I love, I want to incorporate it and I feel like it like brings life back into a room that's been the same for a long time and I feel like that affects a lot like when I work at home I have my desk up against um, the windows I look I'm surrounded by sunlight which greatly affects me I love that I I can't be cooped up in a room I I need I need sunlight I need to look at things I need you know kind of fresh air I need to be out in the open of of the house so I don't have my office in a room so I look out over our back yard area that we just redid so I get to stare at it a lot um but that greatly affects like being able to wake up with my coffee and sit down at my desk when the morning sun is coming up and it's starting you know the calmness of of the world is starting to wake up and like recently I've been noticing that butterflies will fly past the window And it just brings a smile to my face and it affects me a lot. It puts me in a good mood. If I was cooped up in a room, I would never see the sunlight or the butterfly. And that's sad, especially like the decorations on my desk. Huge mood changer. I love a decorated space. I love things to be like, you know, an organized mess, if you will. I'm I'm not like a a tidy person 100% of the time, but I know where everything is. I'm that type of person. So just like the location of where you're living can affect your life like LA affects me in a way that I always feel like my fingers on the pulse I can easily go out and be inspired or um, just kind of like on the tip of my toes like you go out and you're like going to the grocery store and you see girls that are very into like fitness and wellness and they're shopping at Whole Foods and they've got their workout gear on because they just came from a killer Pilates class, it kind of makes you want to work out. Not going to lie. It does. Or you see someone's like, you know, the booths at the flea markets are very different here. You know, like the curation and to see inside someone's like mind, it's like, it's really cool. The stores here are so cool. The restaurants are decorated beautifully. I mean, obviously I'm talking a lot about home decor because that is what kind of like affects me a lot. So I look at all of those things, but you know, even driving, I, I was driving in the neighborhood yesterday and are passing a house and there was, if, if you've ever been to LA, you've probably seen them start to film a movie and they have like big trucks and like, um, craft services where they have like the food and stuff outside. And they have the, the trucks that are filled with so much equipment that always amazes me that how much equipment and people they need on a movie set or a TV set. But I, I passed a house down here and they were actually filming something Halloween related. So they were decorating, there was a team outside this house decorating it for Halloween to film some scenes. (gasps) That's just so cool. Like that for me, I'm like, not only did that just get me really excited for Halloween, but even to see if I eventually see whatever movie or, or TV show that was for, I'm like, Oh my God, that was filmed right here. That's, that's just so cool. There's just cool stuff that happens here. Premieres and like, I don't know. I just feel like so everyone just feels so alive, you know, here and they're always doing something really cool. So I feel really inspired by the city. Um, I feel really in, inspired just in, in life. I feel very like, Uh, at home here. I I always have. And I'm very, very grateful and fortunate to call it home um, because, you know, it's, it's a big deal. I think as you're, I think in, when I was young to make it in LA is like a word, like to make it, you made it. Uh, If you're not just a transplant, you don't just go home. So I, I, unfortunately, when I was young, I kind of regret feeling this way, but I think it was a very real feeling for me growing up is that if I move to LA, I have to make it because if I move back to Texas, I failed. And I felt that way for a long time. Now I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that everyone feels like that. And I'm not saying I should have felt like that, but that doesn't change that I felt that way. And I remember, and I I think I still in some ways feel that way because LA was a dream 
for me to live here and to live a lifestyle here and to be somewhat successful enough or to have to have um, to have the amount of success to actually stay here was a major dream and a major like you know thing that I wanted to accomplish in life and I thought that if I moved back and I had to move back I failed I didn't I didn't do it now I don't feel that way anymore maybe it's because I feel like I made it <laughs> maybe it feels like I'm I'm a little more old. I'm older it's been 16 years I've had time to get that out of my system but I also live here so it's you know it's it's just I don't know why there's stereotypes I wish there wasn't because there really shouldn't be. I mean, I think that everyone lives the life. I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't pay too much attention to that. Um, but I do recognize that they exist and, and I, I really love it. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I gave AG1 a try back in March because I felt like I wasn't getting all the vitamins and nutrients that my body needed because I was getting really exhausted in the afternoons and always resorting to like multiple cups of coffee in the afternoon, which wasn't making me feel great. So I now drink AG1 in the afternoon before diving into a big project that I'm working on and it makes me feel so energized and like I'm giving my body the nutrition that it actually craves. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having a complicated routine. It's just one scoop of AG1 into about 12 ounces of water every day and every scoop of AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients that give us major benefits like boosting energy, gut and mood support, and even healthier looking hair, skin, and nails. And if you're someone that doesn't like taking a whole bunch of pill form supplements, you are going to love AG1. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash XO. That's drinkag1.com slash XO to check it out. Really love it. So I am a strong believer in your surroundings kind of affect your mood and what we've been talking about, like my creativity is greatly affected. So I always make sure to incorporate things into my life and into my home that are going to positively influence those feelings for me, positively influence my mood, positively influence my creativity. And that took a long time for me to like uh, identify what those things were, you know, like for my desk, it's the sunlight, it's being out in the open. You know, if, if something's not feeling right in your life and you're feeling like, oh, I just like, every time I enter this room, I just feel horrible. If it's like not organized, you know, if you're a super organized person and it's, you've got like a space in your house that have, has just gone to shambles, you know, like maybe you just need to spend some time before we get to fall, you know, and just like really dive into like making sure that your space is positively impacting you. And I'm not saying like when, when it comes to your city, it's not like you can change that on a whim. Picking up and moving to a new city, that's 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 a that's a big decision. I'm glad I made that in college, um, you know, because I, d I had very low, I had I didn't own anything to bring with me really. I had two suitcases and I didn't have any real responsibilities because obviously I was 19. You know, so that's a l much easier move move for a 19 year old than a than an adult. It would it would be a big move for me in my 30s, but that we really can't control, but taking the time maybe like we used to do and uh, Romeo and I, when we were at the cottage and we were feeling a little bit uh, cabin fever and a little bit closed up, like our surroundings weren't really benefiting us, we would take a drive to Austin and it really helped. You know, we would be able to go shopping at the stores. I would be able to find some really pretty home decor pieces that I couldn't find locally. And I would be able to go to the restaurants and we could try something new. And we could get Alfred coffee on the way back and we could come home. And that was uh, major. So maybe it's just about, you know, kind of shaking up your lifestyle in that way. If it's, if it's not working for you, maybe you just need to take a trip or to change your room or to move some furniture around to make it feel a little different, to have a different perspective. I know that those have a big impact on me. 
And I think if you're feeling any some sort of way that that could feel um, the same. So that com that comment really, uh, you know, spawned a bigger kind of conversation about, you know, how our surroundings affect our life. Uh, and just my experiences, I've had truly, truly great experiences living in California. Um, I've had some not so great experiences living in California, like with different horrible jobs that I had and trying to make it. It wasn't all sunshine and roses. It wasn't all perfect. Actually, a lot of it was a, a pretty big struggle, you know, but it never changed my perception or my um, outlook on the place in general. Um, it was just the people maybe I was surrounding myself with, or it was the jobs that I was holding weren't fit for me and just kind of recognize, I wish that I would have recognized some of those, you know, maybe friendships that weren't supposed to be in my life anymore, which is a whole nother thing, or jobs that weren't fulfilling me and wasn't on you know, it was kind of derailing my path, you know, and I, I wish I would have recognized those sooner, but everything happens for a reason. One of the greatest pieces of advice that really stuck with me that my mom gave me one time, I think it was something that she either read or heard in a movie or uh, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Maybe she came up with it. I, I, I don't know, but I, I think it was something she read. Um, she said, she told me one time that friendships, when I was kind of having a falling out with a friend, she said, friendships are like passengers on a train. Uh, some people get on at one stop and get off at another. And they're only meant to be in your life for that specific period of time. And it's okay that they got on when they did and they got off when they did. And that really stuck to me. I feel like I've kind of expanded on that in a broader sense to where it really is everything in life. Sometimes the train that you're on that you see you, you know, you finish at, like you start from the starting point and you end at the end point because the train is your life. And there are always going to be people, jobs, experience, like all, all the things, some things start and stop before you end the, the end of your life. So a friendship that you had at childhood, you probably won't know them when you're in your 70s, you know, or someone that you met along the way or what they were just supposed to be on for a particular amount of stops. And that's okay. And that really put something into perspective uh, for me when I was really, really um, down about a friendship kind of falling apart and me trying to force it to work. And it wasn't. And it was kind of like I was forcing that person to be on the train for longer when they were trying to get off. And that's okay. And maybe, hey, Maybe I was just a passenger on their train for a little bit and I got on and I needed to get off and they were trying to keep me there. And I feel like we've always all kind of had those relationships in life. So that was a great piece of, of um, advice to end the podcast. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I know that if you're anything like me, uh, you are definitely affected by your surroundings. So I would love to hear what you've done to kind of like shake things up or change, give yourself a change in scenery, something that's worked for you. Maybe it is a trip that you've taken um, or maybe it's, it's regular trips that you take, you know, like just to kind of break you out of a, um, a routine or just to give you a new perspective. Because I know for me, I'm always trying to push my creativity. For me, creativity like really relies very much on me experiencing things and so if I don't experience it, it could be the smallest of things it could be the sh experiencing and going out to my rose garden to see the shape or the shadow that it's creating on the floor that was an experience that I had that was something I saw that is now inspired who knows what a color palette of some sort so I know for me um, experiences and um, doing things changing up my environment really like helps me creatively. So I would love to hear from you what those are. And please let me know what you want to hear on the podcast. I love just sitting down with you guys and chatting and just like about all the things. So it doesn't matter what it is. Don't be shy. Please comment if you're watching on the YouTube video and subscribe with the bell notification turned on. So, you know, as soon as I upload, upload a new episode, and if you're listening on the go, definitely follow and leave a review. It helps the podcast so much. So if leave a review on wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify or Apple podcasts or wherever you stream them from, I know I personally love to listen to podcasts when I'm walking and I've been 
um, my August goal was to walk more often in the mornings when it's not so hot in the mornings and afternoons. So I turn on a podcast and I walk for an hour and it's great. I listen to one episode and it really passes the time and I'm outdoors, which always uplifts my mood. So if you're listening on your walks, let me know. And we also film it for YouTube so you can catch us over there too. I'll see you guys in two Wednesdays. Bye guys. Thank you.